welcome to A Minute to Midnight, another episode from me, Chris. And from Tony. Oh, it's been a while, Tony, but hey, we're back. Yeah, we missed last week, but that's all right, we're back this week. Yeah, we certainly are. A, a lot of news has gone down from back then till now. Yeah, sure has. Give us a bit of a rundown, Chris. Well, I've got some financial news for us, and it, it's in the silver metals, uh, the precious metals market, and particularly silver and gold. And uh, there's, there's a website that I sort of subscribe to, it's Money Metals Exchange website, and they've, they've just had a, a news article come out this morning. It says that they've just learned that um, through their private network that silver, silver shortages uh, that plagued the US Mint last month have now spread to the Royal Canadian Mint where officials have, are having a severe problem sourcing silver blanks for their silver maple program. Uh, the news from the north of the border um, comes on the heels of last month's critical shortage of silver eagles, an oversold situation from which the US Mint is still trying to cut, recover. And it's interesting, some figures that have come out from this uh, supplier of, of precious metals. In the last uh, 90 days of trading, they've had, well, up until the 31st of July, this is, they've had, um, from the, the last 45 to the previous 45 days trading, there's been an increase in total sales of 135%. Uh, s- Broken down, silver has increased 116%. They, they sold from the 1st of May through to June the 15th, 369,268 ounces of gold, uh, sorry, silver. And then in the, in the, from June 16 through to July the 31st, that increased to 797,711. So 116% increase there. When it comes to gold, um, in, in the first 45 days, it was 4,645 ounces that they sold. And in the latter 45 day period, it was 12,929 ounces. So that's an increase of 178%. Interesting that gold has out. Um, Outnumbered in silver ounces in increase in in percentage, if you like. Um, then it comes down to their first time orders. I've had had quite an increase in first time orders in the first 45 days of trade. They had 598 um, first time orders take place, and in that latter 45 um, days of trading, 2,778. Uh, first time orders so that was an increase of 365 percent wow and um, I actually heard Steve Quayle of um, Renaissance Precious Metals the other day saying in his 35 odd years of being a metals dealer that this is about as tight as he's seen it yes physical demand uh, I think throughout the whole world is suffering at the moment um well, the demand's not suffering, but certainly people getting physical gold and silver, it is getting harder. I actually purchased some recently, and there's a one- to two-week wait on certain metals. Um, I've searched a few websites, and they too are having struggles one to three weeks of supplying the market. So we are in a squeeze situation at some point, uh, I believe that you will not be able to get the metals. You may pay for it, but you mightn't get the metals. You may have to get your 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 fiat currency well, returned scary, to you. Yeah. Pretty scary for the people that are keeping on waiting and hoping the price is going to go down and humming and harring because they might find that they'll run out of time. According to Avery Goodman of SeekingAlpha.com, on the 6th of August, Goldman Sachs took delivery of 3.2 tonnes of physical gold and HSBC took delivery of 3.9 tonnes of physical gold. And these are banks that are uh, saying the outlook for gold is bleak. Well, do as the banks do, not as they say, because obviously they're saying one thing, but doing something else entirely different themselves. Well, there are a lot of people that, that, that I've warned who have not made the move. Yep, same. And they've been warned. And what do you do? What do you do? And if you're in that position, if you, you've been just waiting and waiting, you're going to wait to a time where you aren't going to be able to get it. And and that's what's effectively um, taking place now. 
You've got to get in now. If you're going to be buying metals, you've got to get in now. Yeah, well, the elite are manipulating the price of gold and silver, really, because their greatest fear is the average person buying precious metals so that they can economically com- economically compete with the elite following the coming economic crash. That's what I believe. And, um, and so we're seeing price manipulation, but the demand for the physical is going up in spite of that. Yeah, that's right, and uh, we are going to have that that crisis. It is coming, there's no doubt about that, and of course there's possibly, well, we're we're really um, positive about this, that there's going to be a new currency issued, and that will be backed by gold and silver, and unless you've got it, then you're going to be struggling. Yeah, well, at some point, like you say, the existing form of paper and coin currency will be eliminated, and replaced probably by an electronic one, which will be wholly controlled by the banks. Um, But before that, confiscations are going to occur from people's bank accounts. So you've got to get anything out of the bank and out of bank safe deposit boxes as well, because they won't be safe in bank safe deposit boxes. No, you're right there, Tony. Anything denominated in paper is not going to last, although it would be good to get some paper... um, currency put aside because as Tony's already alluded to there is a there's there's a confiscation coming and your bank bank account is not safe and that will be raided so it's better to now put that into a a safe fur haven and that's why we speak precious metals and um and apart from that yeah put some paper aside too because uh, if if and when the, the time comes, uh, it'll be a, a mirror image of what's happened in Greece recently and what is happening in Greece now, and that you will only be allowed to have a certain amount of uh, money out of the account per week, out of your ATM machine, and that'll be it. So put some in reserve now, get some precious metals and put that aside and uh, at least you, you'll be one of those that are being uh, seen to be ready for what's coming. Yeah, sure. And um, another little piece of news I noticed on August the 9th, the uh, Times of India reported that in a breathtaking spectacle, the goddess Kali was projected on the Empire State Building in New York. If you're not familiar with the goddess Kali, well, she is the Hindu goddess of death and destruction. The name Kali means black, time, death, lord of death. She's called the goddess of time, change, power and destruction. She's known as the black one or the dark one. Well, you've got to wonder if this is another Illuminati message symboling um, what's coming to America, Babylon. The Empire State Building is pretty much a uh, symbol of American power. To project an image of Kali on it, to me, says a lot about what they're expecting, death and destruction. And uh, Kali, interestingly, was supposedly the wife of the god Shiva, who is um, the destroyer, another Hindu god that uh, they're using at CERN with the Hadron Collider They've got a big image of Shiva, so the destroyer and the goddess of death. What a great combination, Chris. <laughs> That's a combination and a half, all right. So uh, the demise of America is upon us. Is that how you... you... Oh, I think so. I, I it actually I just brought to my mind a dream I had in June 2014, whereupon I saw in this dream two eagles, a large one and a small one, and somebody in military boots, I didn't see the whole person, I had just seen like the boots, trampled on the back of the eagle, one eagle, the small eagle, and broke its back and made sure it was dead. And then proceeded to do the same thing to the large eagle, to kill it, break its back and make sure it was dead. I mean, at the time I thought, wow, the large eagle, I woke up and thought, that's America, that's the United States of America. I've been a little puzzled as to what the small eagle is. There's a few possibilities there. But, um, yeah, that's what comes to my mind when I heard that or about that uh, projected image on the Empire State Building. Right. Talking of dreams, I mean, there's that scripture that says, you know, your, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. 
And, um, yeah, so I'm not calling you an old man here, Tony. <laughs> Thanks there, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, um, I felt that dream was prophetic when I had it. I mean, the small eagle could perhaps represent, well, it could be two separate events, a big event and a, a small event followed by a big event, or it could be uh, the small eagle perhaps represents the states, individual states, I think you mentioned to me once. And um, the large eagle could be the United States as a whole. I noticed uh, since I had that dream, I found out um, that Pastor T.D. Hale also had a dream about an eagle being shot out of the sky by, by Obama. I definitely recommend anyone to check out T.D. Hale's dream. Wow. It's well worth listening to. I had a dream probably 14 years ago with an eagle in it as well, and it represented, um, should I share it? Yeah, go for it, Chris. Yeah, the the dream was there's an eagle in its nest, and it watched over its area that it was it was in, and it watched out from its nest high up, and uh, then it, it flew out beyond its its sphere, and then beyond there, and 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 watched over that land. Then it flew over the seas, and into other territories, went over islands, watched over islands, watched over other nations, flew over those, and then it came to a particular nation that was. Uh, surrounded by wild animals. And in the middle of this land was a lamb, and it watched over that that nation. And then in the next part of the dream, I saw the, the eagle was in its nest and it had its wings clipped. And it could no longer, um, it could look over its own territory and that was it, just watch over it, but it couldn't fly beyond that. So uh, it, it couldn't look after the other nations. It could not look after this nation that had the lamb in it. And... The um, interpretation of that was that the eagle is, is America and it's it, one day in the future its wings will be clipped. It will no longer be the, the, the military that looks over everybody. And of course the nation with the lamb in it was Israel mm. and, the, and the lamb was representative of, of Jesus Christ. And, and so Jesus Christ is going to be the one that looks after that land. It, it doesn't need anything else, you know, wow. it doesn't need the U.S. to look after it, wow. but it's going to be surrounded by, by wild animals. And, um, wow, yeah. So Amazing. Talking about dreams, we've had, we've had one. We were going to have a guest on today, and unfortunately she couldn't make it. And she's shared with, with Tony. So I'm going to pass it over to you, Tony. Um, if you could just read out a bit about, um, yeah, okay. um, about who she is and, and where her and her husband have, have been and come from, share that dream with us, this prophetic dream. So over to you, Tony. Okay, the, the lady Janine Smith and her husband have just recently, within the last 18 months, returned from 17 years in the United Kingdom where they were marketplace ministers and missionaries sent out from New Zealand by Christian Life Centre, which is now called Life. Whilst they were there, events regarding what they believed were closely aligned to end time events began to rapidly take place in their everyday lives. Having been so removed here in New Zealand from those kind of physical end time events caught them slightly by surprise, and they quickly began to realise that the Lord was placing them in strategic positions to be watchmen on the wall and within the business realm at a high level. Janine's husband worked alongside a friend of his within one of the world's elite, i.e. Illuminati-backed large insurance companies for the first two years they were there. They arrived in the UK in 1997, a few months before both the elections of Tony Blair and the death of Diana, Princess Diana. When they saw how England went into deep mourning over her and the idolatry that was evident, the Lord began to speak to Janine regarding what is about to take place from that point in time within the UK and Europe and then <clears throat> and then early days of the Euro, which they believed was the beginning of the physical manifestation of the New World Order. It was from that moment that they began to truly seek the Lord, what he was wanting to do with his people by way of preparations for the end times, by using them as pioneers, um, as it was, um, and what were the early days of transference of wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous movement? And she sent a Proverbs 13.22, which says, A good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up. 
This was the Lord's move to set up his kingdom currency and business of provision here on earth for the end times, so that his children would be provided for not only supernaturally, but through the setting up of Christian financial systems as alternatives, so that his body would not be caught up in the deception, decadence and ripping off by the world's financial system. Uh, <clears throat> they feel very strongly that, that the beginning of the end of the Jewish year on the 29th of Elul, which is the 13th of September 2015, that a global economic collapse will begin to unravel, beginning with the United States and closely followed by Europe and the UK, which ultimately becomes global, so New Zealand also needs to heed this warning. And basically, the word she gave on the 28th of July by the Holy Spirit, 28th of July 2015, was this. I am coming. Soon you will see me on the horizon. Do not delay with your preparations. I have waited a long time to take my bride's hand. Don't delay in preparing the way for me. I am coming. Great shakings are taking place. Great disaster is upon the earth. The core is groaning and heating up. Eruptions are increasing, for it is time. I have waited a long time. The delay is shorter than you think, but not when you think. Prepare the way. Prepare the way. Prepare the way. The way is my bride. I want her by my side. I want her with me. Don't look at the ones who you think aren't my bride, for a great harvest will happen within the final seconds before my return. Do you not remember when I said of the workers in the field that the first shall be last and the last shall be first? It is not up to you to know how I do this. It is up to me and those who you have all but given up on. I have not, so no more despairing. I have chosen them and they are mine those whom I have chosen from the beginning of time. I am a merciful and loving God who has given the right and perfect amount of time for all I have called to come into my kingdom. The clock on earth is ticking and it is close to completing for the moment of my reaching out from eternity and taking my bride's hand. Don't delay. Get everything in order. Seek me regarding wisdom in this hour, for it is only as you do this that you will be at peace. I love you, my beautiful bride, and I want you by my side. Trim your lamps, fill them with oil, and be ready to come when I call. A call for preparation. Yeah, and I noticed the last bit about trimming your lamps. That's to do with the five wise virgin, virgin, virgins. And the five foolish. Yes. Which one are you in? Are you in the camp of the five wise or the five foolish, and uh, that's that's a word of of prophecy right there. I had a had a vision and a dream last year of a volcanic eruption here in New Zealand of of, of a dormant volcano, and the the vision came clear to me one day, and I had a dream confirming it three days later, three nights later, and um and the start of that that's what eluded me to to think of that the start of that um, prophetic um, voice that we've just listened to. And, I mean, it's already happening here in New Zealand. Just yesterday we had some volcanic activity take place in Rotorua. And a, a geyser has just shot up out of the middle of nowhere between two two buildings in a, a commercial estate. And um, so, yeah, the rumblings are already there. The volcanoes are starting to erupt. We're yeah. going to see more of that, I think. We are, but you know, there's there's a lot of hope in that in that prophecy that we've just yeah, heard, there is. Yeah. And, and and the fact that hey, Jesus is coming back for his bride, and and he says his bride is going to be unblemished, and uh, and it also says in the word that there's going to be a influx of of people coming to him in the end days, and uh, so we've got to be excited about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Despite despite all that's going on, you know, <laughs> there's a reason for it all. Whether it's a financial crisis that leads people back, I mean, yeah, it's going to hit us in the pocket, but hey, what, what glory is going to come out of it? Yeah, true. Yes, yes. Well, 
God has a plan in this, doesn't he? I mean, Satan has a plan, but God also has a plan. And his plan is greater. We know we're on the winning side, and and we can't lose hope. We can't lose focus. Yeah, these things are going to happen. Don't focus on the things. Focus on what's going to come, come out of it. And God is in control, regardless. Um, and, and we are on the winning side, so therefore we're going to come out victorious. Amen. Yeah, in the book of Job, we see that God sort of had, a, had an agreement with Satan. Hey, you can go down and you can, you, you can take to Job as much as you can, but you can't kill him. And, you know, is that what's happening today? God said, yes, yeah, Satan, you can do what you like with this earth, but you're not going to take out my church. And, um, and, and the gates of hell will not prevail. We're on the winning team, folks. Uh, yeah, we might go through some stuff, but don't lose hope. Uh, just faith in God and allow him to to do what he has to do, but uh, ask him to preserve you. Um, the, it could be a good analogy of the church too, the fact that, that God has allowed Satan to go, hey, you can do what you like, but you can't kill my church. You can't you can't take my church out. My yeah. church is is the bride. But and judgment begins in the church, doesn't it? Well, it does, um, unfortunately. But it says in the word that we are we're not to be judges of the world. But anything from within my church, yes, you know that's where judgment starts. Mm. You know, Noah. I mean, Steve Quayle. I liked how he put it this morning. But I keep going on about Noah myself, but. Uh, I use Noah as an example to people that I do talk to, that in the days of Noah, so will these days be in the future. Well, Steve Quayle nailed it, nailed it this morning, and he said uh, he said that Noah was the first prepper. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know, first yeah. prepper in history was Noah. Yeah. <laughs> and how, how right and how true. And then he went on to talk about Joseph as well, you know. Joseph was a prepper as well. He was in he was in the enemy's camp. And here we are, folks. We're in the enemy's camp. You know, we need to be Joseph's. We need to be Noah's. You know, Noah had a blueprint. I believe God's given us a blueprint. Are we willing to read it, though? Yes. You know, yeah, yeah. this is the blueprint we're putting out here, folks. Get ready. Something big's about to happen. And you want to be on the right side. You want to be in the ark. You don't want to be outside of it. To be in, you've got to prepare. Noah did something. Are you doing anything? Hello? Yes, good word, Chris. Good word. Interestingly, like this this show, Chris, I noticed we were going in to go in one direction with it, but it's it's kind of I think we just got to flow with it. It's tending to go towards the prophetic directions today. So rather than trying to take it back to where we were going to go, let's continue on in this. I think um, I'm just going to share another dream I had on the um, the fifth of April, which was the night. Of the blood moon, I had a dream. And when I went to sleep after seeing the blood moon, I dreamt I was in a car and a huge tornado was coming towards me. It was a massive one. I was in the car, but I was in the USA, not New Zealand, which I've never actually even been to the USA. But in the dream, I was in the USA. As the tornado approached, I remember thinking at the time, like, this is when it's really important to hear from God for guidance. So I prayed and asked God, should I turn left or should I turn right to get out of its path? And he said, turn left. I knew in the dream that turning left was actually to be heading towards the west. I kind of felt like the tornado was heading down the middle and splitting east from west. Is that speaking perhaps of a global east-west event? Then I woke up. Yeah, could well be. I mean, here's, here's what's going on in China. Exactly. Where... That's what I was just thinking with the um, currency war between China and the IMF and the USA. And I see China's just devalued, surprisingly, its yuan. And could this be retaliation for the IMF not including it in the basket of SDRs? Just as you can't poke Putin and the Russian bear in the eye and expect to get away with it, you can't embarrass China and expect there to be no repercussions for the West. The war is on, believe me. 
Yeah, and the fact that they're having a, a problem in their share market at the moment. Yeah. Uh, in the West as well, transfers from East to West. Um, yeah. But the significant thing for me was I in that dream, I remember thinking, all right, this is where the rubber hits the road. It's at these times where you've actually got to hear God's clear direction and guidance because we can't do it on our own. It's like if you make a decision in your own strength, you could make the wrong one, but we've got to hear from God. And that was the real thing that was impressed on me, you know, and I think that's where we're coming to in the world. We're going to need God's guidance in all our decision making. Yeah, well, that's right. There'll be nowhere else to go. No. The fact that this this tornado or a storm is coming down upon you, what do you do? You 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 do your, you can't prepare then. It's too late. But um, coming back to preparation from that that word from Janine, you know, are we prepared enough? For such a, a thing, are you prepared for a to- tornado to all of a sudden hit? Um, you know, in the physical and in the in in the spiritual realm. I mean, um, it could be an actual storm. It could be an actual tornado. Are you ready? Is your is your house ready for that? Your household? Do you have all the all the tools and 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 provisions in place? For, for such an event, what's so different about that when, when he is us telling you of something that's coming, it's a, it's a storm in a different sense, um, but, you know, are you prepared? First of all, once again, do you have your, your, your spiritual house in order? Secondly, do you have provisions? Do you have shelter? And, and do you have your financial um, plan put into place? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I was listening again to, I know you've listened to it as well, we both listened to um, Steve Quayle talking um, with Dave Hodges actually on the Common Sense show this morning. And um, he was talking about the need to make sure you've got plenty of food, which I thought was really interesting. You know, he's a, a metals dealer telling people, look, if you've only got 500 or $1,000, Put it first and foremost into into food because that's what you're going to need the most. Yeah, and he, he alluded to a, it sounded to me like a hyperinflation type scenario as well. It's, it's not just the fact you've got food, yeah, you need it, but the price of it's going to get out of whack soon. And it's almost like an investment. It is an investment. It's an investment in your survival. But the fact that he's saying your, your $1,000 worth of food is going to be worth far greater than that yeah, I in a short time. Yeah, that was time. really interesting, actually. Yeah, mm. I, I noted that as well. Yeah, and this this all ties in, folks, once again. We take it on board because the time is short. It's starting to run out real fast, and, you know, we're only a month or two away from this, possibly, and, um, and you need to prepare now. Um, give us some insight on what we should prepare for again, Tony. Okay, well, we're heading for... The uh, 13th of September is the um, 29th of Elul, which is the end of the Shemitah year, and that is very likely to be um, when a crash could occur. It could possibly even be the night, I'm not saying it will, but it's a Sunday. It could even be the night that they decide to do the confiscations out of your bank Um, because, you know, stock markets will be closed on a Sunday. Perhaps it won't happen on that day. It may come afterwards. There's a lot of... Ducks lined up for September, a lot of um, things in the prophetic realm. Can I just interrupt there? I just want want, want listeners to to know about this. I mean, you've alluded once again, you've, you've said, and, and I'm sorry for being repetitive again, but what Tony's talking about there is, is here in New Zealand, they call it the Open Bank Resolution. Go and look it up. It's going to happen, folks. 18 months, two years ago, the national government, the government power that we've got, they, they put through Parliament, rushed it through, that any bank that, that's, that's over the value of a billion dollars, and all of our banks are here in New Zealand, have got the right to take your funds, and they call you a, an unsecured creditor. So in other words, a depositor is unsecured, and your money goes first in the unlikely event, as they term it, of, of a financial crisis. So, so that's what's about to play out here and since then it, um, the world has has followed suit. New Zealand was the first country to in, institute this in their laws and every other country in the western sphere that I know about has 
done the same thing. And the European banks have had up till now to get this in place, and they have. So they're all ready to go. And and when a financial crisis does occur, um, it's going to filter through from that that word, that prophetic word we've just had. It's going to filter through from from Europe, from America, and it's going to come down to us here in New Zealand, Australia, and we're not going to be exempt here. So be prepared. If you've got money in your bank account that you don't want eroded overnight, and I'm talking it could they could take 90% of this, there's not knowing what they're going to take. And what they're going to give you in return is a, is a worthless bit of paper in their worthless bank to say you've got shares in them. And, and you're going to probably go, oh, great, I'm a shareholder now. But what you don't understand is those shares are going to be worth nothing. They're probably going to be worth negative. So, so that's what's coming, folks. So we want you to know this is what's around the corner. Be ready. And the only place you can be ready is, is to take your funds out of that bank and put them in your back pocket or put them into to an asset, a hard asset, that's going to do all right in this time that's coming. And once again, that's silver and gold. Yeah, totally agree. Basically, you know, I hear people saying, oh, it won't get that bad, and they just, they're living in a state of denial or normalcy bias, and they think here in New Zealand, oh, no, we're, you know, sweet. But the reality is we could need food, we could need water that we don't have easy access to. So now is the time to be, be storing what you might need. Hey, look, I, I think... Something's happened in this last week. I'm, I'm going to go off a little bit of a tangent here, but I think, we, you know, keep it on track as much as I can. Last week, New Zealand was given bad news, and that is our milk solid price has gone from $5.25 down to $3.75. Now, now that's going to have a significant impact on us as a nation. Yeah. We've just lost a big portion of our gross domestic product right there and then. Yeah. New Zealand is no longer the land of milk and honey. We are not going to be exempt of what's coming. What's coming now is we're going to have decreased land values. Our farming values are going to come down. Not, I'm not talking about our residential here, but the price of our farming, our commu farming communities are going to be really squeezed here. And that's going to have an effect on the rest of us as a nation. Our major export is dairy. It's just been hit in the gut. And, and we're not going to be exempt. This is going to follow through pretty quick. We're going to see a lot of asset sales in the, in, in the dairy, in the farming realm. Our imports are going to drop off because a lot of our imports rely on the farming community. Um, this is going to have detrimental effect, folks. Well, the bottom line is you've got a stock market crash in China. You've got this happening in New Zealand. You've got the situation in Greece. You've got Puerto Rico defaulting. You've got how many more ducks do we need to line up to say an economic crash is coming? All the signs and indicators are there. It's going to affect us all, the whole world. And now is the time to be prepared. Forget your normalcy bias that says, oh, well, we'll never need stored food. The supermarkets will never run dry. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Prepare now because none of us knows for sure how bad it's going to get. Better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. And I don't like putting dates on things, and you shouldn't, but it is all lining up for something happening in the next one or two months. Another reason why we need to be focused here in New Zealand on, on getting ready, and, and we are complacent, I want to strictly have you um, recognise that things are going to get bad and, and worse than we've probably ever seen. And is it not better to prepare for something that, that may or may not happen, but wouldn't you be better prepared if it does happen? You know, you, you go out and you insure your car, but you're not willing to go out and prepare for a, you know, for, for a disaster that's looking like coming down the pike in a very short time. Yep. Okay, Chris, well, we're actually out of time, mate. We have uh, <laughs> we could go on. We could. I know we could, but we better uh, call it a day here, I think. So uh, thanks for listening to this episode of A Minute to Midnight. Um, signing off is Tony and Chris. Catch you next time.